Hi, this is Yusri Yusuf from the Environmental Technology Program of the School of Industrial Technology, University of Science Malaysia. And this video is for the course IEA 216 computer application in industry for the MATLAB component. And this video is about the topic matrices in MATLAB. The topics that will be covered in this video is an introduction to matrix in MATLAB, how do we index matrices in MATLAB, what are some of the shortcuts for matrices in MATLAB, and the different data types and format. We're going to start off by starting up the application MATLAB. Now, the first topic, matrix in MATLAB. MATLAB is designed for operations on matrix. Now, how do you start off working with MATLAB is by using the command window, and uh, we type in our commands here at the prompt. And once we finish typing it in, we press enter, and MATLAB will evaluate the command and provide the results in the next line. We would type in expressions for equations in MATLAB into the prompt and press enter. An example of an expression is like x equals to 1 is an expression where we will define x as being equal to 1. Now, once we press enter, MATLAB will evaluate that expression and the value of the, the variable that was created will be displayed in the workspace. Now, variables are names that we use to store these values. So let's type a few expressions into the prompt and see how does MATLAB respond. We're going to start off with first expression, x equals to 6. After finish typing it into the prompt, pressing enter will give this response, the results of the evaluation of, of this expression, and the display of the value of 6 stored in the variable x. Let's do another one, y equals to 2. Now, since 6 and 2 has been stored into x and y respectively, then we can perform operations on these variables. Uh, mathematical operations such as x plus y and since x has already been defined as 6 and y has been defined as 2 the interpretation of this expression would be 8. Notice that since I did not define a variable for x plus y MATLAB by default would store the value in this variable called ANS which stands for answer and we can also see the variable answer here but this variable answer would be overridden by any new commands. Okay, let's uh, continue to operate on the x and y, such as x multiply y. Notice that answer has been overridden by the new uh, command. Another one is x divided by y. And x to the power of y. By the way, variable names are case sensitive, so small x and capital X is different. Let me give you an example. Let's say x equals capital X equals to one. You notice that there will be another variable, capital X equals to one, on uh, besides the small x, which is equals to six. And these two are different variables. Now, MATLAB works with the rectangular numerical matrix. So a matrix is a collection of numerical values that are organized into rows and columns. For example, uh, three rows and four columns is defined as a tree by four matrix, which has 12 elements. Two more terms. One is the scalar and the other is the vector. Both are matrices. A scalar is defined as a single number and is represented by a one by one matrix. This x here with a value of six is not just a value of 6 for x, it is a matrix, but specifically it's a one by one matrix or a scalar. A vector is multi-row or multi-column matrix, but it is different from the normal matrix because it only has either one column or one row. I'm going to give you some examples of scalar matrix. Let's say c equals to 5.66. So here C is a one by one matrix, which is a scalar matrix. You say X is equals to, notice the notations I use in the expression. So here I define X as a vector matrix because it consists of only one row, one column of values. Now notice that I'm once I press enter here, then the x, the small x here will be overwritten by this new command. So here is an example of a 
vector matrix, but this is a row vector matrix. How about a column vector matrix? x1 equals to 2 Notice I use the semicolon to go to the next row instead of comma here, which goes to the next column here. By pressing enter, then I will get my vector matrix. This example is more of a traditional matrix where there's a, a number of rows and a number of columns. Now this is a 3 by 4 matrix. We always define a matrix by its row and column and in that particular sequence. Now again, let me stress that spaces, commas, and semicolons are used to separate the different elements of a matrix. Spaces or commas like this, this is a comma, would separate elements of a row and semicolons like this one would separate the column. So instead of using comma here, I could use a space too. Let's go into how do we index matrices or basically how do we find certain elements in a matrix? How do we find the address of these elements? Row by column matrix is defined by the number of rows and columns. Individual element of a matrix can be specified with the notation where uh, the matrix A has in the parenthesis the first element here is the row and the second element here separated by the comma is the column and we can uh, access the elements of the matrix by knowing the address or the index of that element. So for an example if we would like to access the fourth row and the first column then we would type in A 4 1 like so but this is an example don't type it in because the A we define here doesn't have the fourth row so let's start by defining another A matrix, uh, 2 by 4 matrix, so 2 space, no, 1 space, 2 space, 4 space, 5, semicolon to go to the next column, 6 space, 3 space, 8 space, 2, and pressing enter. Now let's say I want to access the second row and the first column, let's say this value here 6, I can just type in A, 2, 1, by pressing enter, then we'll see 6, the value 6. So at the second row and the first column, the element is 6. We can also look at a range of values in a matrix instead of individual single elements by typing in the colon. So an example would be A. Okay. We like to see um, the first three columns. Let's say we like to see this 1, 2, and 4 value in a series. So we, we know that this 1, 2, and 4 is in the first row, so we can type in 1 for the row. And to see this first three columns, elements, then we just type in 1, colon, 3, and press enter, then we will see 1, 2, and 4. So if I want, we, we would like to see the second row, but the first three columns, then we type in the same thing, a 2, 1, 3, press enter, then we will see that. Let's see if you would like to see the third column, all of the rows in the third column, then we would type in A, 1 until 2, from the first row to the second row, in the third column. We can also overwrite these elements. Since we, we know how to access the elements by the index, we can also overwrite the element in that index. So we are going to use the A matrix again. I'm just going to show it to you here. Let's say I want to overwrite this element here with a value 9. So what I just need to do would be to specify the index. This is a to 1 and then equal to another value, let's say 9, and press enter. And you see that the 6 value has been replaced by the value 9. Sometimes we need to use dummy matrices or dummy variables in our calculations or to reserve space in a variable to increase the speed of computation. 
because it's always faster to pre-allocate a variable than to write it on the fly. So we can create a null matrix, like so. Square brackets. Pressing enter, and that will be our null matrix. So continuing on the index, indexing matrices, so let me just re redefine A. Let's say we like to remove entire rows or columns of this of some parts of this A matrix. Now I would like to remove the third column. I can do it like so. All of the rows, by typing this colon, I specify to MATLAB that I like to access all of the elements in this row, comma, the third column equals to the null matrix. So what this would do would delete or remove the third column. And if I want to remove the row, then just like the previous command, what I need to do is just, okay, second row in this example, then the colon. That means to remove this row here equals to null. And I'm just left, A is just left with the 1, 2, and 5 elements. We can also concatenate matrices which means to combine matrices. So let me define A again. And since we want to concatenate it with another matrix, we're just going to define B. Now to concatenate, all I need to do is just use this function called cat, which stands for concatenate. The first argument is the dimension. In this case, it's the third dimension. Then the, f the element, the first matrix that we like to concatenate, A and B, and by pressing enter, then we see that the result is this concatenation of the matrix. Basically, it just combines the matrix A and the matrix B into one matrix C, where the matrix A sits in the first uh, dimension and the matrix B is in the second dimension, denoted by this number. So we can keep on adding matrices into this matrix C. And this is a useful way to handle many numbers of matrices. Now let's go into some of the shortcuts that you can use to generate matrices in MATLAB. The two common ones are the ones and the zeros. Let's say you want to generate a matrix that comprises of just the value one. You can use this function called ones and we define the rows and columns. And when you press enter then you see that you've generated that contains just the value of one. Now for zeros, just like ones, it's just this function called zeros, one five for example, one row with five columns, there, you've created a matrix of zeros. We can also transpose matrix. Uh, transpose means to interchange the rows and columns of a matrix by using the function transpose. So let's say I like to transpose the matrix A here. So I'll just type in transpose A and you notice that the rows has been interchanged with the columns. Now besides the function transpose, you can also use this apostrophe symbol as a shortcut to also do the same thing. So let's say if I want to transpose B, I'll just type B and apostrophe, press enter, and it also transposes B. Now since we've already defined a few variables here, and um, if you want to list those variables in your command window, you can use this function called who, and it will list all the variables that has already been defined in your workspace. This is useful if you like to specify the variables in an um, expression or in your code to automate any operations on the variables in a script. This who function just lists the variables, but if you like to see more details, then you can just, you can use this function who s, where it would write down the variables, but it will also give the specification of the variables, the size, the bytes, the class, and the attributes. So here we see that A has a is a 2 by 4 matrix, B is a 2 by 4, C is a we concatenate A and B, it's a 2 by 4 by 2, and so on. Now the amount of memory that it takes up is written in the bytes here. Like say of course the C would have has more information in it, so it has a it takes up a lot a larger space. And here it gives you the, the data type of the variable. Since these are all numbers inside A, B, and C, and so on, so they are by default set 
to the number format or the numeric format which is called a double. So different types of classes in MATLAB includes the double if you see here and also the string. There are also other variables besides these two. So an example of a string would be I define the variable word with the string MATLAB and if I type in who s then the word here is designated as having a data type of character which is for strings or for words and letters. So that is the end of uh, this video that introduces to you uh, the topic matrix in MATLAB, how do we index matrix, uh, what are some of the shortcuts to create matrices in MATLAB such as the ones and zeros and also how do we transpose these matri matrix and an introduction on the types of data in MATLAB. The more common ones are like the double as you can see here and also the character. And, if you have any questions or any comments, feedback, you can uh, write the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos on MATLAB. And I'll see you in the next video.